Hi, welcome back. I hope you are doing great today. So in the last video I said, not all aircrafts fly at the high altitude. It depends on their purpose and limitations. And also, the factors pressure, temperature and humidity are closely related to density. They has a huge impact on it. So that is what we are going to talk about today. If you have not seen that video yet, link is in the description. And if you want to start the aerodynamics from the beginning, you can click the video linked at the end or you can find the link in the description as well. Now let's start with the temperature. It decreases along the increasing altitude in the troposphere, rate of which is 1.98 degrees Celsius per thousand feet increase in the altitude. As we reach tropopause, which is the upper end of the troposphere, the temperature is almost negative 57 degrees Celsius or negative 69 degrees Fahrenheit. In tropopause, the temperature is almost constant at negative 57 degrees Celsius. After that, the temperature increases in stratosphere up to 0 degrees Celsius and again starts to decrease in mesosphere after remaining constant at stratopause. At last in the thermosphere, temperature increases ridiculously high. Because of that, air out there is actually ionized. Now what is ionization? It happens when electrons are so energized that they are released from an atom and leave the atom positively charged. Ions can be negatively charged as well if they accept an electron. Because of this presence of ions, some part of thermosphere is also called as ionosphere, which is present at different heights and layers. Now let's move on to the pressure. Unlike temperature, pressure never increases as we go higher in the altitude. In fact, if we drew a graph of altitude versus pressure, you will see it's not even straight, it's exponential. Wait, 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 hold on a second. Now, what is exponential? Exponential graph represents the rapid increase or decrease in the values. I'm not going any deeper into the mathematics here, because I know you don't like math, right? So to sum up, as we go higher, pressure decreases and the rate at which it decreases also decreases. Pressure at sea level is 14.7 psi and at 15,000 feet it's almost half of it. If you want me to show you how pressure decreases with the altitude and how to calculate it with an equation, please write it in the comments down there. Density is also decreasing as we go higher as it highly depends upon the pressure. If you cannot compress the matter, how can you have more mass for a value? and so the density. One more factor that has a huge impact on the flight is humidity. It is the amount of water vapor in the air. The amount of water vapor that can be held in the air depends and varies with the temperature. Hotter the temperature, more the amount of water vapor that can be held in the air. Fun fact about the humid air, that it should weigh more than dry air, right? Because the humidity or the moisture is basically the water droplets in the air. But it doesn't. Humid air actually weighs 5 by 8 times the dry air. Little strange, right? If you want me to explain how and why humid air weighs less than the dry air, please write in the comments there. So because of this, on humid day, it takes longer runway for the aircraft to take off but more about the runways and takeoffs in the other video. Because of all these factors, conventional jet aircrafts are limited to fly in the lower stratosphere, whereas light aircraft usually fly inside the troposphere. Only military and special designed research aircraft can fly in mesosphere, and only space rockets can fly in the thermosphere. Now, as you know about the humidity, it's time for the question of the day. How would you compare the dry air to the humid air and also write the examples of water vapor in earth's atmosphere as you know first comment gets the huge reward on this channel which is respect so be the first to comment as always let your dreams take flight stay happy and healthy